In this session, we look at the implementation of four expressions. It turns out that there is a systematic translation scheme that maps four expressions to certain combinations of higher order functions. So we're going to see in this session that the syntax of four expressions is closely related to three higher order functions, namely map, flat map, and filter. First observation is that all these functions can be defined in terms of four. So for instance, to have a function like map, call it map fun, that applies a function f to every element on the list xs, we could write 4x taken from xs yield f of x. That's the same thing what that map is usually. Flat map would be 4x taken from the first list and y taken from the result of applying f to each element of the first list yield y. So that's a flat map. And filter finally can be expressed as a 4 like this, 4x taken from xs, if the predicate p is true at x, then yield x. So map, flat map and filter can all be expressed as 4 expressions. But in reality it goes the other way. What the Scala compiler will do is it will translate 4 expressions to combinations of map, flat map and a lazy variant of filter. So I'm going to talk only about simple variables x on the left-hand side of a generator where, of course, in general, you could have an arbitrary pattern in this position. So let's look first at a simple for expression that consists of just one generator. 4x taken from e1 yield e2 for arbitrary expressions e1 and e2. So that would be translated by the Scala compiler to an application of map, namely e1 map the function that takes an x and returns e2. The two are the same thing. Now that we've looked at four expressions consisting only of a single generator, let's look at more complicated ones. The first four expressions that we are going to look at would have a generator x taken from e1 followed by a filter f and that in turn could be followed by further generators or filters which are here subsumed by s. That for expression can be rewritten to the following one, another for expression that contains a generator and the filter has been absorbed into the generator. So the generator now reads uh, x taken from e1 with filter, the anonymous function that takes an x and gives us back the expression f. With filter, as a first approximation, you can read it like filter. So what happens here is that the generator will be reduced to all those elements that pass the condition f. In fact, with filter is a lazy variant of filter. That means it doesn't immediately produce a new data structure of all the filtered elements. That would be wasteful. What it does instead is it remembers that any following call to map or flat map has to be filtered by the function f. So it's essentially a smarter version of filter. The third and last form of four expressions that we need to cover is the one where a leading generator is followed now not by a filter but by another generator. And that in turn can be followed by an arbitrary sequence of filters and generators s. That for expression will be translated into a call of flat map. So the idea here is that if we take the for expression that takes all the remaining computations, so we generate a y from e2, then we do something more and then we yield e3, that would be a collection valued operation because we have a generator here. And what we need to do is we need to take everything that comes out of this for expression and flat map it. That means concatenate it all into the result list. That's precisely what happens here. So we do an e one dot flat map with a function that takes an x and gives us back a for expression that uh, has now one fewer generator. So it starts with the generator y taken from e two and s, and then we get back e three. So what happened in the first case was a direct translation into a map. What happened in the second and third case was that we translated the for expression into one that has one less element. So it either has one fewer filter or one fewer generator. This one here had one fewer filter. The filter here 
has gone. Whereas this one here has a for expression, a nested for expression, that now lacks the first generator. So each of these translation steps can be repeated, yielding simpler and simpler for expressions, until finally we must hit the simplest case, and that then would translate into a map. So that's how the translation scheme works. Let's see it as in an example. Let's take our for expression that looks at the pairs of uh, indices whose sum is prime. So that was our for expression. If we apply our translation scheme mechanically, we would be left with this for expression here. So the first one here, we have i until n. That's what you see here. It's a generator followed by a generator, so I have a flat map. Uh, the nested for expression would take the generator 1 until i, that's the one here. That is followed by a filter, so we have the filter here with a call to with filter and the call to the is prime predicate. And finally, uh, the whole thing gets mapped to a map where we form the pairs. What's noteworthy is that this is almost exactly the expression we came up with first. If you compare notes to what we had in the last session, you'll find only two differences. One was we use now with filter instead of filter. We've explained that already. It's just to save on uh, allocations of intermediary data structures. And the second one is we do the filter slightly earlier. We do it as soon as we generate the second index, whereas before we did it once we had generated the pair. But that's just a minor transposition of operations. The end result, of course, is exactly the same. So here's an exercise for you. Remember the queries we had on the books database? One of them was give me the title of all books that have an author with a certain name. Your task is to take this query and translate it into a query that does not use a for expression but only uses high order functions. So how would we solve that exercise? Well, let's follow the schema that we have seen previously. So we would start with uh, books. And we have two leading generators, so that would lead to a flat map where our function takes the variable to the left of the generator and we follow with a for expression that contains the rest. So that would be for a followed by b dot authors if a starts with bird. Yield b dot title. So now we have to take this second for expression here and translate it in terms. I will, for the moment, just write the result underneath. So what we see is it's a generator followed by a filter. So that means we pull the filter into the generator. So that would be for a taken from b dot authors with filter. And then we take the a again, a, a dot starts with bird. And we yield b dot title. Can remove the first one. So we still have a for expression to translate. This one here now has a single generator. So it would translate to a map. So let's do that. So we take the generator. That would be b dot authors with filter a a starts with bird and now we take this one here and map it with the function y and return y dot title. So that's the end result. It's a flat map followed by a map of uh, a generator that contains a with filter. Interestingly, the translation of for is not limited to just lists or sequences or even collections. 
all that we needed for the translation was the presence of methods map, flat map, and with filter, because that, that was what we translated into. So that means that you can use the for expression syntax for your own types as well. All you need is to define map, flat map, and with filter for a type on which you want to use for expressions. And there are actually a lot of types for which this is useful. Uh, what comes to mind is kinds of collections such as arrays or iterators, databases, XML data, optional values, for expressions are defined on option as well, parsers, and many others as well. So, to stay with databases, for example, books might not be a list or a set, but a database stored on some server with data kept on disk. As long as the client interface to the database defines methods map, flat map, and with filter, you can use for syntax for querying the database. And that's the basis of some popular database connection frameworks for Scala, which are called Scala Query and Slick. And similar ideas also underlie Microsoft's Link language integrated query framework, which lets you write expressions close to four expressions, the C sharp versions of them is slightly different, and map them to databases.